all candidates participating were asked the same questions and were given the same amount of time to respond. This video was filmed by QAC TV and the questions were selected by editor Angela Price with reader input. My name is Hannah Combs reporting for the Bay Times and Record Observer. Today with us is Jim Moran who is the incumbent county commissioner at large and he is running again as Republican candidate for mm -hmm. the at large position. So mm -hmm. welcome, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, we wanted to ask you, maybe in two minutes, you could tell us a little bit about yourself and why you like to continue serving as county commissioner. Well, I've been a resident of the county for 15 years. Uh, my wife is, is a nurse. My, uh, all my children are grown out of school. But uh, I was first appointed to this position uh, five years ago when Delegate Aarons got moved up uh, in, into his existing uh, position. And then I was uh, won my election four years ago at the at-large position and I want to continue in that position for four more years. I think that we have an excellent core of uh, candidates on the Republican side that are running, uh, that have proven what we can do for this county with our AAA bond rating and moving some of the uh, uh, projects that have been stalled for many, many years, moving them forward. So the county's in great shape right now, be it taxes, be it services and restoring all those and uh, we're, we're looking to do even bigger and better things in the next four years. Okay. You've been in this position now for, for the five years as you said. What are some of the biggest issues that you see still facing the county or maybe there are new issues that are facing the county now? And, and that's, that's a good question because there, there are and, and I can't say it enough and I've been saying it for the last three and a half years. The biggest issue this county is going to be facing in the future is traffic. And it's not our traffic, it's the uh, tr beach traffic. You know, uh, I hear a lot of times people say to me, you know, you know, be it development or whatever the case may be, we have too much traffic, too much traffic. We don't have a traffic problem from November through April. We have a traffic problem in the summertime. There's a Delaware bypass being built that will dump into 301. And today we just had a meeting uh, of the commissioners and the Economic uh, Development Commission came in to talk about the impacts of that traffic on the county. And what people need to start worrying about is not so much tomorrow, not so much next year with the traffic, but five and ten years from now where that traffic's going to be. And we have been trying for the last three years with the state to give them solutions or options to help us with our traffic problem so the citizens of Queen Anne's County can move around on a Sunday afternoon. And, uh, you know, w we think that this last uh, option that we showed them with closing down exits and uh, monitoring the other exits, again, is not for so much next year or the year after. It's for four and five years down the road. And we're trying to, you know, that's what we're working on now with the state. And, you know, and when we get a better feel for what the state thinks we should do, that's when we'll bring that to the citizens of Queen Anne's County for them to, to review and, and comment on. We're going to move on to some questions we'd like you to answer in a minute. Okay. And um, the comprehensive plan is coming mm -hmm. up for review during mm -hmm. this next term. What is your vision for that plan? How do you see that shaping? I think it's a, you know, well, first off, the plan we have now, I think it's a fine plan. I think it just needs to be tweaked. What we didn't have, what we don't, uh, what we didn't have when we did the comp plan 10 years ago, and again, I didn't work on it. What we didn't have 10 years ago, what we have to deal with now is the tier system. And the, the county has opted out of the tier system. So what that means, it's the same as the septic bill. Growth has to be where it can be serviced by, by septic. And also we have the, um, the, the issue of uh, continual flooding. And we're talking about on a sunny day a flood, you know, not so much a storm. So the rising tides is something we're going to take into account with, with flood maps. So those are two major components that are going to have to be looked at with our existing comp plan to see how we can work those in there. Okay. The county's been approached by the school system for funding above maintenance of effort. That's mm -hmm. not a new request. Mm -hmm. well, what would a, a better strategy be maybe to address their request? Well, let, let's see if we can get through concerned. that in a minute. Okay, because that is that is a, a very good question and it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very core question for Queen Anne's County. And I will say in the last five years I've funded the school board in, in my votes six million dollars over maintenance of effort so and, and I understand that you know ever, ever all the costs rise but what I did propose this year in the budget cycle and I still pro propose it today is let's bring an outside agency in and allow that outside agency to um, basically do an audit on the county commissioners excuse me on the school board and, and what their budget cycle is 
and, and where their money is being spent and see, because if it is a true need and that the audit would, would bear that out, then I have no problems with moving forward with that. Okay. Some, uh, some residents have concerns for balancing future development with protecting the environment. Mm -hmm. what, is a, what is a suggestion for balancing those two? Well, and again, you know, so, well, first off, when you talk about future development, I, I want to make it plain and clear to the public of Queen Anne's County, as, as it, there's, it's no hidden secret that I get blamed for development, uh, be it Four Seasons, Cloisters, any of these developments, I, I get, I'm the developer's whipping boy. When in fact, if you call up to planning and zoning, I've only voted on one development in my five years as a commissioner. Actually, my eight years of service to the county, because again, commissioners don't vote on it, the planning commission does, and I voted on one, and that's a fact, of 20 senior apartments in Chester, Maryland. So I want that uh, notion to be uh, out there with the public and, so that they realize that what's being spread about me is just not the truth. But when it comes to the environment, and that's what I talked about with the comp plan, you have to be prepared to look at the, uh, the rising tides and what, what, we, what we consider conservation in, in certain tracts of land that we don't want any development on. What are some of your thoughts for fostering business growth and economic development in the county? Well, and that's what we had the meeting today about with, with the county commissioners. There is a huge opportunity for economic development on the 301 corridor because you're going to see traffic triple it's going to yeah triple it's going to go from five well, double to go from 5000 to about 15000 vehicles in, in a matter of uh, a year or so so you know there's going to be a lot of traffic there there's going to be needs for that you know uh, the, the study today showed that and and you know with, with Queen Anne's County uh, it, the first and foremost things we need to do when it comes to businesses so we need to get a high-speed internet. We need to get broadband. And that's one thing that uh, Commissioner Jack Wilson and myself are working hard at is because, you know, it's the egg or the chicken. You, you have to have that broadband ability if you want to get any high-tech, high-paying jobs to stop our students and our workforce from crossing that Bay Bridge. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Residents in the northern part of the county, mm -hmm. they sometimes uh, voice their concerns. They don't get the same services that the rest of the county does. Right. What are your thoughts about that and addressing those I, concerns? I don't, I, I don't necessarily see that as far as services. Uh, I will say that sometimes their voice isn't heard because that's the majority of our farming industry. And for instance, uh, you know, last night uh, we had a discussion on solar and some of our farmers opted to, to uh, lease their farms out for solar. And, uh, you know, they have my full support. And I, I just think that, that uh, they have different issues they have issues that need to be brought up and they need to be heard, but I understand their issues. Mm -hmm. are, there, are there any issues that are, I know we had a short amount of time that we mm -hmm. didn't touch on that you want to talk about? Well, I'd like to talk about, you know, I think one of the big things with, with Queen Anne's County, and you see it on the weekends, is our parks. And uh, what we've decided uh, about uh, three years ago, we had an opportunity to develop another park. And uh, I, I raised the notion that before we build any new parks, let's bring all of our existing parks up to grade. And if you, you know, what you're seeing now is all the parking lots being paved, all the parking lots being marked. We're trying to add bathrooms to all the big parks, uh, concession stands, uh, we're, we're removing dead trees. I mean, we just, we want to enhance what we have now because we have a lot of kids and a lot of families in our parks on the weekends. And it's one of the things that I'm proud about being the liaison to Parks and Rec. You know, and, and another thing is, is, is the opioid, opioid awareness, and I think that the Drug Free Coalition in Queen Anne's County going purple uh, for the month of September did a great job bringing awareness, because you now have people talking about it everywhere, and that's exactly what we've been trying to do for three years. Great. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining us and mm -hmm. taking time to participate in this forum. Thank you very much.